viewers, I'm Lexi. I'm super grateful that you're here and that you're enjoying my videos. Today, I'm actually going to honor a subscriber request with this video. Please excuse me in advance, Mercury is still retrograde and it's actually my Mercury return in this period as I have my Mercury in Pisces. So um, some things might come across as a bit foggy and weird, but I'm going to try to, you know, bring it back up and center it. <laughs> Talk about four different types of relationships. Yes, four, not three. And I'm going to clarify what the fourth mysterious one is, but it's actually a really good one. And people don't really talk about it so much because, you know, as human beings, as we go about our lives, we tend to want to focus more on relationships that are difficult and things that we need to solve rather than to think about mm, optimistic, inspiring, beautiful things that we tend to take for granted. You know, I do it. I'm sure you do it as well. Four different types of relationships. I'm going to describe each one for you. I'll try to hold a card so that you can maybe click through the video if you're interested in knowing more about one or the other. Important, important guys, super important to remember. This is just my view of the four different types of spiritual relationships. This view isn't shared by all of the tarot readers and astrologers out there. I'm just going to give you like an insight into my experience and what I think these relationships are. But feel free to do your own research. Make up your own mind, please. Make up your own mind what you choose to believe. Let's see. The first type of relationship that, from my experience, I identified is also the most common type of relationship. Karmic relationships, yeah? I think that you guys know a lot about these. They tend to be viewed in negative lights. And this is a really interesting thing. There is nothing negative about karmic relationships, but we tend to view them in a negative light because they are a lot about teaching us lessons that help us grow, that help unpack our ego, dismantle parts of our ego that we brought from a previous lifetime into this, and we need to have them purged. You will meet a lot of karmic relationships, especially in the first part of your life. So let's say, uh, or the first quarter of your life, because nowadays people thankfully live longer. So we have more life to experience, more time on this earth. So up until the age of 30, especially in your 20s, you are going to be surrounded by karmic relationships. And why the age of 30? Well, that's because there is a karmic turning point when Saturn makes its return in your natal chart. And that is a moment of maturity and growth and letting go of karma. You know, it's like you graduated from relationship lessons. Congratulations. So returning to karmic relationships. So you can have a karmic relationship, and this is the a little well-known fact, that it's not only with people that you are intimately connected with. You can have them with anyone, okay? Your friends can be karmic relationships. You can even have karmic debt with your uh, pets sometimes. You know, you have to take care of a pet that keeps getting sick. Or uh, most of the time, karmic relationships are our parents, yeah, there you go. They are the ones that teach us the core lessons and our souls specifically selected our family to be incarnated in this lifetime so that we learn the lessons that we need to learn. And most of the times it's not comfortable because of the fact that karmic relationships tend to come from our self node, which represents things that we need to let go or Saturn aspects, which represents uh, limits and effort and, you know, lessons that come from perseverance. It's a, they are a lot about letting go, about enduring. You, you might have a feeling that you are um, losing something when you are together in a karmic relationship, like your energy is depleted, like you have to put up a good fight, like you have to defend yourself. But what you're this is only what your ego and your mind are registering. But heart-wise and spiritually, you are growing beyond your means. That is the really beautiful thing. And most of us reach this, this moment of illumination on our Saturn return or a little bit afterwards in the years that follow. And that's a really gorgeous thing um, that we realize that all our hard lessons, our hard relationships were there for a reason and they made us stronger and wiser and better and more powerful. They're very widespread. They feel heavy. You can have them with, even with people at the grocery store, you can have a karmic exchange. 
even with people in the administrative bureau of your city hall, you can have them with your friends. We most of us have them with our parents. And it's really interesting if you do a little bit of um, family research digging like I like to do and you check where your south node is in your astrological birth chart and you check to see if your south node is connected to the sun sign, moon sign, ascendant, Mars or Venus of either of your parents. And then you check theirs as well. But that would be one way in which you can actually determine karmic relationships. So karmic relationships feel quite heavy. They feel like there is a debt to be paid. We are locked into these relationships and we feel like we can't let go until we reach a point in time when the energy has to consume itself. And it's almost as if we are released. Most of the time, karmic relationships are also expressed physically in situations where we are secluded, where we are um, imprisoned, where we are kept away, um, in more extreme circumstances where we are kidnapped. So it's just these situations where you feel like you, or like you have um, children when you're very young and you feel like you have to take care of them or you have to, to study a lot to become a specific person in your life or because you have to, to work a lot in order to pay back some sort of self-worth karma related to money. So you have to become a self-made uh, you know, very rich person in this lifetime. It all depends on the position of the planets in your astrological chart. But what I'm trying to say here is that with karmic relationships, we feel very heavy, very brought down because they are here to teach us lessons. Dharmic relationships, the counterpart to the karmic relationships and the one related to the opposite of the south node, the north node in your chart. Dharmic relationships are about the good rewards you have accrued through your kind heart. When we love, when we are kind, when we give up and let go and make decisions based on our heart rather than our ego, we accrue dharma all the time, in all lifetimes. So there are these two opposing forces, karmic and dharmic forces in our life, the south node and the north node. These are indicators of the debts and the rewards that we have experienced in a previous lifetime and the ones that we're making in our current lifetime. Dharmic relationships might feel a little bit uncomfortable, but you don't have that presentiment that something tough is going to happen, that you can't stand that person, this person irritates you, like it happens most of the time with karmic relationships. No, with dharmic relationships, you feel a little bit uncomfortable. I feel a little bit out of your comfort zone, but these relationships are there to help you grow and they are there to help you ascend. So check to see where you have your north node. You might have, for example, north node in Leo and people that have sun in Leo, moon in Leo, ascendant in Leo, Venus in Leo and Mars in Leo. So all the personal planets, Mercury as well, but you know, Mercury is more about communication and chit chat is not so much about deeper aspects. Where you have all those personal planets, if that person's chart touches upon the points of your north node, then you are going to feel like this person is there to inspire you, to drive you forward. You're going to feel a sense of excitement. So there will be a certain tension that will be expressed very beautifully, very creatively, very harmoniously between you two. Obviously, if your north node is a little bit challenged, then your dharmic rewards might come in a little bit slower. But nonetheless, usually, dharmic relationships are with people that touch our north node. Interestingly, now you can have both karmic and dharmic relationships simultaneously. And I'll talk a little bit at the end about the dharmic and the karmic and the twin flame and the soulmate mashup. How can you recognize a dharmic relationship? It's not only through uh, the person touching, the person's personal planets touching on your north node. It's also about this, you get a feeling of this is meant to be, I need to follow this person. These might be mentors that you meet in your lifetime. They might be sexual partners. They might be your children and your family members if you are super lucky. If you are super lucky to be born in a family that has a lot of dharmic points or if you create a family that has a dharmic connections with your chart, then you are just super lucky. Consider yourself spiritually blessed because you will feel constantly like you want more and more of the energy of that person, you know? Usually, we come into our original families in a karmic situation with our mom and our dad and our brother or sister, other relatives. 
But then in our own families, we create a lot of dharmic points. So you might have, as I mentioned before, South Node Libra. So you're born in a family where your mom or your dad or your sister are Libra suns, Libra moons, Libra ascendants. So they kind of, you know, they're, they feel familiar, but they kind of drag you down and you, you kind of need to grow from that connection out into the world to explore your North Node, which in this case, the opposite of Libra is Aries. So you might have relations with people that are Aries and they just inspire you. You know, Aries suns, Aries moon, Aries ascendant. And you might have children that have uh, any of these astrological connections with you. So it's, it's as if there is this push and pull between our past life and the lives that we are co-creating with, you know, spirit in this lifetime. Dharmic relationships are not so often encountered. These usually come about if you are doing your work in the karmic relationships. You could actually go past your Saturn return and not have graduated from this karmic relationship. You can continue, you can carry these karmic relationships all the way up into your 50s, maybe close to your second Saturn return. So dharmic relationships usually tend to come in and you attract them after you have done the karmic lessons. So there, there is something to say about undergoing those deep lessons and doing that spiritual work because you will end up having relations with people that are just going to give you this positive impulse, this positive energy, the spiritual growth, the nurturing that your soul needs in this lifetime to experience something completely different. Soulmate and twin flame relationships. Guys, I'm not sure if you can actually, can you read this? Yeah. There's that thing where, you know, the camera kind of shows things in a mirror light. Anyway, so soulmate and twin flame relationships. Okay. Soulmates. Soulmates are your other half, okay? To me, the understanding of soulmate is a person that you um, have in this lifetime that is there to help you find peace and live in peace with them. Soulmates are people that have strong connections to um, your son, your son and your ascendant. They are there to guide you on your life path. So if you have a sun in Taurus or an ascendant in Taurus, for example, your soulmate is going to have maybe moon or Venus or Jupiter um, connected to that. Also, soulmates are people that have a double whammy, something that in astrology means that your Venus and your Mars, so let's say these are your two charts, you both have Venus, Mars, Venus, Mars placements, Venus connects with Mars in a trine or in a harmonious aspect and that person's Venus connects with your Mars in a trine or in a harmonious aspect. You feel at ease with each other. You feel like you know each other from a previous lifetime. You complete each other's sentences. You have interests that are in common. And this person comes at a fated moment in your lifetime, usually after you have completed a massive karmic cycle. And this person, your soulmate, usually has a lot of dharmic aspects in your chart and you know brings a lot of dharmic energy in your life so you feel like this person is a gift you feel blessed that you have met this person you feel lucky you feel like life is smiling upon you however there is a limit to the luck and blessings that a soulmate can bring into your life they are here to help you on the material plane or what other um, astrologers and tarot readers call the 3D. They are here to support you, nurture you. They could help you financially or materially or pragmatically, um, socially. They just give you a sense of ease, peacefulness. You feel at home. You can rest with them. You can be yourself with them. And some people call that love. So for some people, love is something very passionate. For others, love is something peaceful. It's something that is centered. It's something that provides you with safety and stability. So we all have different understandings of love. But soulmates are basically the link between our karmic and our dharmic relationships. They are not purely lessons and familiars, although they can feel incredibly familiar. But they also bring a little bit of the dharma, the good luck. They are helping you move forward in this lifetime on your path. So soulmates are truly a blessing. If you find one, keep it. Hold on to your soulmate. 
most people that get married have children uh, those people that follow their hearts and you know don't settle so easily but actually wait until they find the one are in a collection with a soulmate yeah um, sometimes there is some confusion between karmics and soulmates this happens because if you come into this life with a very strong developed ego, you might need to go through many karmic relationships to learn a lot of lessons that kind of refine you to yourself, to your spiritual self. So basically the lessons are just there to spiritualize you, to help you understand that you're a divine being, not only um, a material, practical being, you know, made of flesh. Um, while, um, oh God, I just lost my train of thought. Ah! <laughs> Okay, just going back to the soulmates. So soulmates feel like a blessing. They feel as if um, they are slightly distinct from the karmic relationships, as I said, but they also help us. They borrow from the dharmic relationships. They are not just purely dharmic. Um, so they can be a combination of both. Let me give you an example of how these three energies work. A karmic relationship could be a teacher at school that has a particular bone to pick with you. Like he or she might always like throw chalk at you or give you bad grades or like trying to somehow dominate you or uh, suppress you in some way. That is because they're trying through your interaction with this person, you're supposed to learn modesty. A dharmic relationship might be a friend that you just met, a friend that just feels very, very good. You know, they're cool. You want to be like them. But at the same time, you realize that I'm not like that. I'm quite different from you, but I still like you and I feel very drawn towards you. That is a dharmic relationship, a friend that we admire, a mentor that appears in our life. Um, even a sexual fling, you know, it could be a one night stand, could be a dharmic relationship, something that just wakes you up. You know, it puts you back it inspires you for a brief moment and puts you back on the right track. A soulmate relationship is a person that feels familiar. You might feel loyal to, committed to, so has a little bit of the karmic relationships, but is at the same time dharma. So they are here to put you on the right path. They are here to help you grow, reach beyond your means, and they are there to support you. Usually soulmates are also um people that we have um those people that we fall in love with you know and especially after the age of 30 there is a higher likelihood for you to meet your soulmate to meet the person that is meant for you usually saturn return brings a lot of great rewards towards us and most people meet their soulmate when they are around 29 28 29 30 and that's when they get married and have children okay so 30 is a really big cutting point and finally, the one you've all been waiting for. I know. <laughs> it was a very silly face. But here is the relationship that obsesses us all. Your twin flame. Okay. Your twin flame is out of this world. Your twin flame is not there to support you. But your twin flame is basically you. In a different body. So... If a soulmate feels familiar, if a soulmate feels comfortable, if a soulmate feels like a combination of your dharma and your karma, a twin flame is just you, is a person that you have outstanding compatibility with, a person that just can look at you and you have an orgasm, a person that knows you like you have no, not encountered anyone before. Not even your parents know you on that deep level. A person that frightens you and excites you at the same time without being creepy or, you know, in any way bizarre. That could be a karmic relationship. But your twin flame is basically you. And you get the shock of your life when you meet them and you realize you basically, you see yourself. You see your defects, you see your qualities. And depending on the degree of self-love that you have in that particular moment in time when you meet them, and usually they come about when we are on the right path, we are growing spiritually very well, that's when we first have our contact. We drew them in through all the work that we've been doing. They represent a little bit of a dharmic reward, but they are not dharmic. They are literally you in a different body. Plato, this idea comes from whoa, whoa, way, way, way in antiquity. So the ancient Greeks and Romans, I know of them because I live in Europe. 
Perhaps you have other stories if you come from uh, the Middle East or India or China or North America. But I'm talking about the space in which I was born and the kind of culture that was instilled into me, the education I got. So the ancient Greeks and ancient Romans, Plato especially in the symposium describes how there is this myth of the lovers, that there are two souls, basically one soul that is divinely guided on this earth and was split in two and put into two different bodies. And the two bodies always want to come back to each other because the soul wants to merge with itself again to feel complete. From this platonic love myth, we have an understanding nowadays of what romantic love could be like that, that there is something called the one, that there is uh, when you are truly in love, it's like you merge with that person, that... Um, True love is not only about sex, but it can also be platonic. So it can be about the heart mostly, you know. Um, we have a lot, of, a lot of myths connected and a lot of misunderstandings that were attached to that original idea. I genuinely think that he was talking about twin flames. And I think that was one of the first recordings that we have of the description of a twin flame. Your twin flame, astrologically, has ridiculous numbers of planets that are connected to yours. The most important being your moons. Your moons are, they have to be highly compatible. If your person does not have a moon conjunct your moon, so in the same sign, or a moon trine your moon, then it, that person is not your twin flame. I'm sorry to disappoint you. That person could be a karmic, a dharmic, or a soulmate, but that person is not your twin flame. When you meet your twin flame and you have a look at their chart, it's almost like you see the stars aligning because your sun fits that person's sun. Your moon fits that person's moon. Your ascendant fits that person's ascendant. I'm going to use my example. I'm a Libra ascendant, Pisces sun, um, Saggy moon. So my counterpart, my twin flame is Libra ascendant, Sagittarius moon and Pisces sun. However, he is not those qualities. I've met him, I've met my twin flame, but he has all of those. So his ascendant, his moon and his sun are trying my planets. So the energy is almost like it's magnetically pulling you towards each other. And that's why you guys feel if you are part of these twin flame relationships that you are magnetically pulled to each other. And this is why you have to practice self-love, self-nurturing and self-awareness and to work at dismantling your ego and getting deeper into that spiritual sense of self in order to be reunited with your twin flame. Because you're basically working with your astrological natal energies and you're working with that person's astrological natal energies. Twin flames are people that the moment you meet, the love between you two grows steadily in time. With a soulmate, it could be that your sense of peace might be perturbed. As I said, with the soulmate, it's more about peace, feeling peace, feeling at home. With a twin flame, passion, skyrocketing. Mental connection, telepathy, skyrocketing. You, When you touch that person, it's almost like you're touching yourself. When that person rests on you, it's like that person, it's like there is no um separation between you know where that person puts their head and where you put their head it's like you are one you are one person it's so hard to describe but because twin flame relationships come with a lot of karma a lot of dharma a lot of things to purge um most of the time we tend to be separated by uh divine circumstances from that person that is ourselves because we each because we came into different bodies with a specific intention and that intention was to grow and to develop each individually. So we each have goals to achieve in this lifetime. But if you've been doing your karmic work, you get the reward of meeting your twin flame and then you get successive moments of encountering that person over and over again at specific points in time so that you feed off each other's energy again and again and again and you grow and you create more. When I met my twin flame, for example, um, I just started this channel. Um, 
I was doing astrology for so many years, but I was basically still hiding. I was covering up who I was because I was a little bit ashamed. I thought, you know, my previous profession was very rational and very critical. And it was a lot about making fun of things like astrology and tarot because intuition is not something that academia does very well. I was kind of hiding. I, I was wearing a false sense of self, a mask. And when I met him, a process whereby both my false ego and his false ego and oh my God, were our egos inflated when we met, they gradually started being dismantled. This manifested itself into us having a lot of arguments, us pushing each other away. We knew from the beginning that this is my person, but we kept pulling each other apart. And... In, in the end, you know, it, it reached the point where the fights were so intense that we just couldn't be together. I suggest if you are in a twin flame relationship, from my experience, is to stay away from your twin flame. If you are reaching this point where the passion is too intense, you become sexually obsessed or you cannot communicate and you even start disrespecting each other. Stop, stop, okay? Your peace of mind and your development is much more important than being in love or together with this person. You are this person, so you are never separated from this person. And your love only grows and grows in time, okay? Um, in spite of you trying to do everything to get rid of this person, your person is always going to be there. You're going to feel them. You're going to telepathically communicate with them. When your heart chakra opens and grows, the more it grows, the more you're going to feel in union with them. Um, they are just there. It's inevitable. Once you met your twin flame in this lifetime, that's it. It's connected baby. Um, and that might infuriate some or it might delight others. It all depends on, you know, the level of awareness that we have and the patience and perseverance and, you know, those things that are difficult to practice. That's why I, I believe that all of us could have a potential twin flame, but that not all of us are necessarily together or committed or wanting to continue relationships with them. And I don't think my that's my kind of controversial viewpoint but if you have not worked through your karma up until the age of 30 and all even beyond it's going to be very hard for you to attract a lot of dharma and the twin flame relationship it's not a given that you will meet your twin flame it all depends on how committed you are to your spiritual development and to following a specific life path that doesn't mean that you're not going to fall in love you are going to fall in love. As I said, you are going to fall in love with a soulmate. It's just that that soulmate is not going to be your twin flame. So as I said, with your soulmate, you're going to feel as if you're in love, but it's a stable, peaceful kind of love where you can have sexual passion, but it's not going to feel like your whole life is constantly changing when you meet your twin flame. So with the twin flame, there is this Pluto energy. There is this energy of constant growth, constant transformation, of passionate lovemaking that feels tantric. It's almost like your chakras are aligning. With your soulmate, you can just have sex and feel joy and pleasure and have babies, but it won't feel like your whole life is being decentered, like you're being pushed on a spiritual path, like you're pregnant with ideas, like you're growing beyond your reach, like you're ascending new heights of awareness and understanding, like you're going in the 5D, you will feel a bit more, more sane in a soulmate relationship than in a twin flame relationship where, to be fair, you're constantly kind of doubting your sanity. That is because you're just um, warping in between different alternative realities. And sometimes this happens most deeply in our sleep. Okay, guys, I'm going to stop here. I feel called to stop here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys.